previously on Ready Set Robins. It looks great, performs great, and it was a fun time. So I think that'll do it for this time. If you want to see the videos that we're making, it's going to be a fun summer. I hope you guys come along. I hope you subscribe. That'll do it for this video, and we will see you next time. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I might have just lied to you a little bit. This computer is almost done, but we have one small project to do, and I think you guys can learn a lot of good information, and it has to do with the RGB. So let's reset up the cameras, and I will start digging into this, and we can go fix this and make it the best ever. So let's go. Let me grab my mic. Here's the deal. We just built the water cooling on this and that is all great. But when I first built this, all my fans and my AIO, a lot of the RGB in this um, was Corsair. And that was all great. I got it all working and we're using the IQ software, which is a little confusing, sometimes breaks, but overall I've been okay with it. And I have all the hardware. So now I've gotten some EK water block stuff. And as you can see, they have RGB in the water block and in the reservoir. That's all great, except they use what would be considered a more standard RGB connector for the five volt RGB. But as I looked into this, these are the exact same. All of these addressable red, green, blue LEDs are the same as the ones we're using for the cubbies. I know how the data is transferred. It shouldn't be that hard to convert these and use them with the IQ software and the Corsair ecosystem. So then I can just use IQ. I can get them to work and have it all synchronized with all my other LEDs. So that's what we're gonna do today. The way I have it set up right now, it actually does have an adapter in there that I already built. But the problem is that the water block and the reservoir are doing the exact same thing. LED one is exactly like LED one on there. And what I want to do is be able to do different stuff with them. So we got to modify the reservoir and then we will be able to be set up. So let's pull apart the back and we'll get going. I'll start explaining how everything works. This probably looks like a huge mess of wires. That's because it kind of is. The way that the Corsair lineup of stuff works is that you've got like this hub. I think they call this like the pro hub or something like that. And you get two channels of addressable RGB and then you can get a, or maybe they call that the pro node. Anyway, so you have this two channels that are outputting RGB and then you have these hubs that literally just daisy chain the data to each of the fans that you plug into it. And everyone that's online get all fussy because they're using Molex connectors, which these are very standard. I actually use these type of connectors quite a bit at work. They use these standard connectors rather than the, uh, the RGB connectors that come on strips already. So I'm actually a big fan of these Molex connectors. And these are just, again, these just supply more power so you can have more strips, more LEDs, and plug them into the same thing. So there's only two lines of data coming out and then you can you know, power tons of strips, tons of fans all off of this hub powered from you know, an external power. So let's talk about the standard connector here. So the standard RGB connector is typically has two pins, nothing, and then one other pin. And that's ground, and that's five volts, and then this is your data. That's great, but what this doesn't allow you to do is to add on more LEDs to that one data line. And I'll explain this in a second. So let's say we have three LEDs in a strip, and then you've got, we'll, we'll exclude power and ground, and then we'll have the data coming in. What happens is there's a data out of every LED, and that goes into the next one. Data out, and it goes into the next one. We'll add in the little arrows. And and then the data that you send, you just send packets of color. So like one packet is like what color, red, green, and blue that that LED should do. So right here, you would just send three packets right behind one another. And what it does is, so we've got three packets that we're gonna send and they get to this first LED and this first LED says, oh, that's my packet. And then it takes the next two and sends them over here. And then this guy says, oh, the first one is me. And then takes that one and sends it over here. And that's how it works. So over here, you're just sending three packets of data. Each and every LED is 
taking the first packet, saying that's me, and passing the rest on. So what happens is at the end of your strip or your fan or whatever, you have one LED that has the output. And with this connector, you have to go all the way to the other end of the strip in order to get the data to coming back. So all that Corsair has done is they make it so that each item that you plug in to their system is four pins. So you've got your five volts, DC, your ground, and then you've got your data. I don't know if this is the right pin out. And then you've got your data return. I will just say data R. So they make it so that everything you plug in and then you tell it how many LEDs are in there, but you can plug in something and then in the next channel, plug in something else and in the next channel, plug in something else. And, and it will have that data line at the end of your strip coming back into the connector. So that way it can continue on to the next item. With this setup, the standard that everyone uses, if you want five strips that plug in like this, you're gonna have to have five different data lines in order to, to change the colors on them. So it's really nice in this Corsair's lineup, you can do, you know, two data lines and I have like six fans and I'm gonna do two strips and I could add in more LED strips and, and it's like, it's a really great way. And they use a standard Molex connector so you can easily get parts for it easily get crimpers and pins and, and make all your own connections. So in this sense, I'm, I know everyone in the PC industry is like, oh, you know, it's annoying that they use a proprietary connector, but like, it's super nice. It allows so much flexibility for me to build my own connectors. With that out of the way, that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I've made these two adapters. Here's the connector for one of them and here's the connector for the other. And then I've made my own cable. This second hub, RGB hub that I got, it didn't come with with their little wire, so I made my own wire out of that. The issue with my EK water block stuff that I got is that it's only four pins and I don't have that data return. So right now I just have the two data lines tied. So they're doing the exact same thing because the two, my reservoir and my water block, each LED is being the exact same color. What I wanna do is we're gonna pull out my reservoir and we're gonna modify it and bring the data coming back in so that way I can continue the change of data through my reservoir and then into my water block. So let's do that. We gotta drain the loop and get the, the reservoir out. Let's go. So the way that this is gonna work is we gotta take off this plate and the screws come in from the back side. So yeah, I'm gonna have to actually pull the entire reservoir out, but I think that's just three screws. Okay. Here's the standard RGB header or adapter that I made. And this is what's gonna be going in here. So that way we have the two pins, so power, data, and then ground. And that's gonna plug into our actual RGB strip. And that goes into the four. And then we have the data coming from the end of the reservoir right here. And we're gonna make a cable after we solder it on from here. Next, there's just one, two, three, four, five screws here on the bottom are like, yeah, screws, bolts. There's five of these and uh, they need to come off. This is what we wanna get to. And this is amazing. As you might be able to see, there is three. There's ground, data, and then five volts. There's 14 LEDs in here, and all we need to do is right here, right here at the end, we need to connect our data line and then bring it back through. But look, the exact same LEDs that we use on, on everything else. They just don't care enough to bring this data line back into the connector so that way you can continue the chain on to other things. So we're gonna bring the data line into this connector or into my adapter and make it so that this works with the Corsair stuff. I had some 26 gauge wire and I'm just doing black because all the others are black and so I want it to blend in. But looking at how 
much space there is in here, I think I'm gonna use a 30 gauge until I get to the top, which I think is out of frame. So I'm gonna use 30 gauge along here so then it's small enough to fit in between and not get in the way of squeezing the reservoir because if you've seen, oh geez, <laughs> if you've seen some other reviews of this reservoir, this plate you can't remove. You need this plate to squish and, and make a good seal to actually hold water. So I don't want the wire to interfere with any of that. So we're gonna come in here and tin that pad. It's got a little bit of solder on that middle pad. And then I'm only gonna strip off a little bit. And I'm going to tack it down like so. I gotta actually get all the sheathing off of it. And then we're gonna come in here with our soldering iron and just tack it down. And this is not typically how I'll solder, but I'm trying to give you guys a good angle of actually getting it tacked down. So we've got that tacked in. That was the hard part, we're done, woo! So you wanna get some isopropyl alcohol and actually clean up the flux or else it can eat away at a bunch of stuff. All of these LEDs are just passing the data on and they take the first packet for their own color. And all we need to do is just continue that line on. So when we plug in our water block or another strip or something, the data will actually get passed to that. I am tucking it to not the outside, but the inside of each of these LEDs and then using the pressure and I'm, I'm checking and this is still flush so it shouldn't interfere with actually clamping on the reservoir up there but it should really help hold my new wire coming back. So I'm gonna push this up and then I'm gonna snip this off, solder it into the 26 gauge wire because this is what I wanna use to actually run up to the hub because it's a little bit more robust and we'll go from there, should be pretty good. So now we have our data coming back. And there we go. Now we have our power and ground and data in and then the data coming back from the end of the LED strip. So we got it mounted back up, it's nice and sturdy. Good, good, good. So on this hub, it's all fans, 100% fans. And then on this hub is gonna be my extra stuff. So we're gonna put the reservoir into slot one. Uh, I made this cable, which has power ground and the data. And then right here, you can maybe see, I just tied the two data lines together. So theoretically, anything I plug in after this will just replicate what is on that one. So for this connector that I have into here, I actually just took a female Molex of the same style and then cut it off and had the pins like, cause it's a female connector, but it's male pins coming out. And then I just pushed them into the standard RGB. Okay, there we go. Now we have our two EK water blocks, standard RGB into two headers for our Corsair stuff. No leaks, we got our new wire. Now we just gotta go see to make sure the uh, RGB is working like we think it should. Now time for proof of the pudding. So hopefully you can see my screen here and then we got the camera going in there. And if we go to the lighting node pro, so again, channel one is all of our fans. And if we go, we can see here's our fans. I got the ML, six of them all connected. And as you can probably see in here, like I have all the fans in the way that they should be. So now if we go to lighting channel two, um, this is where things get interesting. So 
Again, we counted 14 LEDs in there and looking at all of the hardware that Corsair has right now, the closest thing I could find was a 250 millimeter RGB strip. And we can tell that if we go here to channel two and we click off of it. So now you can see LED one. Oh, you see there it turned on, LED one. And if we go over to these, you see we got those. So this is where, here we'll do second to last. See, there we go, that should be 14. And then if we go to the next one, it actually is all the way up here on the water block. So LED 14, LED 15. So this has 14 LEDs. The 250 millimeter strip has 15. That's close enough for me. Um, and then as I was playing around with it, I was trying to see on the water block how many LEDs it has. And it looks like a 350 strip. Yeah, see, there we go. There's one LED on right there at the end of the strip inside there. And if we go to the next one, then it's off. We get one extra one from there. And it looks like, yeah, so a 350 millimeter strip is three LEDs off. But because we have one more from the 250 strip, that means... It's, it's close enough. If we select all of them, we can see, ooh, look at that. And that means we can actually have it do some pretty fun stuff. If we add in another thing, we can say, hey, do a color wave. And then all we do is we just select everything in that first strip and that does a color wave. And then if we add in one more and we say, hey, do visor, then all we've got to do is come over here, select last one of there and up to three. And now you can see this guy's doing a color wave while the water block is doing a visor. You can get full control over, over all of the RGB in there. It's pretty sweet, I have to say. It basically gives control back to my entire system for for RGB and now I can like make it do a ton of fun things because my RAM, my fans and my water block, everything should be controlled off of that and, and it should be amazing. And I can add in more strips later if I want. So there we go. You can see it in action. You can see it working. All right, so I played around with it a bit. I don't know if you can tell, but we have RSR colors. We've got our orange and our lighter blue. It's a little bit hard, it's not exact. Because of the modification we're able to do, I'm able to do my front three fans to be like a color wave and my reservoir to also be the same color wave. But then my three fans inside of this main chasm and the water block and the ram can be in a color shift. So it'll shift between the two colors. And before this, I wasn't able to do that at all. So now each and every part in here, I can change the color to how I want and make it do fun stuff. Like I could have my reservoir change from green to red depending on like the temperature. So that was a really quick project and it actually turned out really well and it was really easy to do. I'll try to link in some of the info that really helped me out to figure out how I was gonna modify this. And if you have any questions, we're always looking at the comments. So if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And I just hope you have a good day. I think this is gonna be it. Bye.